All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about surfaces. Uh, and to get started, we're going to talk about uh, parameterizing surfaces. Now, we've done some work with curves uh, in the past. Uh, and when we say curves, we're talking about curves in a plane. And so a couple of the ways we viewed them uh, would be things like y equals f of x. A standard function would be a curve in a plane. Uh, we've talked about uh, f of x, y set equal to 0. Uh, so we've got an implicit uh, way of defining a curve. And then we also had our vector valued function where we might have something like this, f of t and g of t. Uh, and that, of course, also uh, plays into the parameterization where x would equal f of t and y would equal g of t. Now for surfaces, some of which we've already discussed, um, a format might be something along the lines of z equals f of x, y. Uh, the implicit form might be f of x, y, z equals 0. Uh, and now the vector valued form would be r of u, v, which equals f of u, v, g of u, v, and let's say h of u, v. Uh, from there, and much like the last one, we could say the parameterization would be x equals f of u, v, y equals g, of uv and z equals h of uv. So again, these are just forms of surfaces, uh, a couple of which you've already seen. And what we're going to work on to get started is going to be to parameterize these surfaces like this. Now, one of the biggest uh, and most important things you can take away from looking at surfaces versus curves, primarily with their parameterizations, uh, is that for, cur for curves, you have one parameter. You have parameter t. For surfaces, you're allowed two different parameters. In this particular case, I've got u and v. Uh, so keeping that in mind, uh, let me go ahead and clear the screen and we'll take a look at an example. All right, so the first example we're going to parameterize uh, would be this sphere. Now, it makes sense after having studied different coordinate systems to use the spherical coordinate system to go ahead and parameterize. So just as kind of a review, we know that this for the spherical coordinate system, x equals rho sine phi cosine theta. We know that y equals rho sine phi sine theta. And we know that z equals rho cosine phi. Now, we're actually pretty close to having this uh, parameterization complete. Uh, the only thing that, that we have to worry about here is this rho. Uh, but we know that rho, in this particular case, rho squared is going to equal a squared. So since we know that rho squared equals a squared, then rho would equal a. And I'm just going to come over here and replace all of these with a's. So when I put this parameterization together now, and I'm going to use the notation r of, uh, and then our two parameters in this case would be phi and theta. I'm just going to be able to drop those in. I've got a sine phi cosine theta. I've got a sine phi sine theta, and my z then would be the a cosine phi. And the two parameters, uh, the phi and the theta, you can see throughout, uh, a is a constant. Uh, a was defined as rho, and that came, of course, from the fact that rho squared equaled a squared. Uh, so there's our parameterization. Now, anytime you have a parameterization, uh, you also need to put uh, bounds on the, param on the parameters themselves or put them on some interval. In this particular case, we have two now, so we'll define our phi. If you remember back from the last chapter, uh, phi is defined between 0 and pi. Uh, that's the angle that starts vertically and then drops down. And then our theta is going to be defined, as it always was, uh, between 0 and 2 pi. So this whole thing collectively right here is going to be the parameterization of that full sphere uh, given to us. Uh, so it is very important to remember to include the bounds on those parameters. All right, so for this next one, um, we're given z equals 2 square root x squared plus y squared between um, z equals 2 and 4. Now, 
in the last example, it was very obvious to, to move in the direction of spherical coordinates because we were given a sphere. Um, now, uh, it's not as obvious, but if you just take what you're given, many times things will, will play themselves out without, without a whole lot of uh, reinventing the wheel. So one of the first things that jumps out to me is I've got this x squared plus y squared right here. Uh, and so if I think of that in uh, cylindrical coordinates, then I can say z equals 2r. Remember, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, so the square root of that would give us r. Uh, and additionally, if now I'm thinking, okay, I've used the x squared plus y squared equals r squared, um, I'm also going to now need to figure out what x and y are. Uh, x we know was r cosine theta. We know y is r sine theta in spherical coordinates. And so I think we've got our parameterization right in front of us already. If we now choose r of r theta, the x can be r cosine, the y can be r sine, and as I mentioned, z kind of took care of itself. Uh, z is going to be equal to 2r. So notice how we whittled this down now into two parameters, r and theta, throughout. Um, the observation from the initial function into this pushed us to use x and y in terms of r and theta. Once we had those, we've got our, our full parameterization. Now, we can't forget the bounds, though. Um, we know that r has to be bounded by something, and we also know that theta has to be bounded by something. Uh, the theta is pretty straightforward, uh, 0 to 2 pi. Um, the r, on the other hand, um, we have to somehow use the z equals 2 and the z equals 4. Well, if z equals 2, and I put a 2 right there, when I divide that off, r is going to equal 1. So our lower bound is going to be 1. If z equals 4, and I put a 4 right there, divide that 2 off, r is going to be equal to 2. So now we've taken into consideration that z uh, equals 2 and z equals 4 can be applied to this component and give us this bound on that parameter. So here would be the full final parameterization uh, of the original uh, uh, situation. All right, so in this example, um, we're going to take a look at the parameterization of the surface cut from y equals x squared um, by z equals 0, 3, and y equals 2. Now, when it comes to this parameterization, and we've done spherical, we've done cylindrical, and now we're going to keep it in terms of x's, y's, and z's. Uh, but when it comes to this, um, again, I think the easiest thing to do is just to kind of think uh, of what's given to us and how we can handle that. So even before deciding the parameters, I might move forward and work with what goes possibly in the x's and y's. Given this uh, equation right here, we've parameterized this as a curve in the past where we've let x equal t and then y would equal t squared. Well, let's just keep it simple. Let's let x be itself, and if x is itself, then y would have to be x squared. So using exactly what we're given, we know that y equals x squared, and then x could be itself. So now we've filled out two of the three blanks, if you will, already, and we've only used one parameter, which means that we've got an x there, but we've got an opportunity for another one. And so for z, I really don't have any other information about uh, an equation, uh, so I'm just going to let z be itself. So my parameterization here is going to be r of xz, x, x squared, z. But remember, a whole lot of this depends on the bounds. So since we've got parameters x and z, we know that x is going to have to be bounded by something, and z is going to have to be bounded by something as well. The z is pretty straightforward. 0 and 3, given to us as 0 and 3. But when it comes to the x's, we have to think back, how does this come into play with y equals uh, 2? Well, if y equals 2, and I put a 2 right there, that's going to give us 2 equals x squared, which means that x equals plus or minus root 2. And those are your bounds. Negative root 2 and a positive root 2. So here's the full parameterization of uh, this situation up here. Now, again, this is one of these things where, where it can look a lot harder than it really is, 
but just take what they've given you. And, and remember, there are, there are all kinds of different parameterizations for this same situation. Um, so don't think that just because you do it one way and somebody else does it the other, that one, one of you has to be wrong. There, there are plenty of opportunities for different parameterizations. Um, but take what's given to you uh, and just try to keep it as easy as possible throughout, remembering you're allowed two parameters and you're going to put bounds uh, on those two parameters as well, which will help with a lot of the given information.